Aloha and welcome back. I'm Fade Panther and this is Super Robot Wars 30. Uh sorry, it's been a few days. Thank you all for being patient with me. If you have been. If you haven't been, then uh why are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> Early morning, so I'm probably going to be coughing for a bit. Um, onboard doesn't have... Um... Let's go here. The orbital ba uh, orbit base is in visual range. That's the Triple G orbital base? <clears throat> Those are spaceships attached to the outside, right? Izagawa, Karaga, and Adamitsu. The, div uh, the Division fee uh, Fleet, the Triple G Mobile Squad's motherships. Wait a sec, I thought those three got wrecked in the Primeval War. Good eye, Yuta! After the Primeval War, um, those three were built to replace them. Then what are... After the Primeval War, the old... Triple G left for the Trinary Solar System never to return. Right, the Triple G Rebellion. <clears throat> I think the Prime Minister Yuma has all his people working to get that sorted out. So just hang in there everyone. We'll get the truth out there no matter how long it takes. Well anyway, after we reformed the uh, into the gutsy global guard, the Federation wouldn't authorize us to rebuild the second generation div uh, division fleet, so we ended up just building new models of the old ones. That's why those ships are docked at the orbital base. In orbit base, huh? Now that brings me back. Have you been here before, Koji? I sure have. Many times, in fact. It was about ten years ago, though. <clears throat> the orbital base was our base of operations for whenever we were fighting in space. We'd never have survived without it. But most of the original Triple G staff went to the Trinary Solar System and never turned. But there are some familiar faces there, Koji. Oh, Triple G versus G uh, Better Man. All right, Better Man. I forgot about him. Welcome to Cruz. That voice. This is the Triple G orbit base. You're cleared to dock. Proceed to docking port three. I see. So little Hana has become an operator. She's not the only familiar face you'll see. But I don't want to spoil the surprise. I'm using uh, a special headset that cancels out outside noise. So it is drastically altering the way I perceive my own voice, which is very strange to me. <laughs> So, uh, I apologize if my voice acting gets worse, and I'll be weirded out if it gets better. <laughs> Welcome to the Triple G Orbit Base. I'm Shingu uh, Yakamatsu, Triple G's current director. Call me Chief. Gladly. Ple it's a pleasure to meet you, Chief Atsumatsu. 
Akamatsu. I'm Commander Mitsuba Grey Valley of the Decruz. Thank you for inviting us here. Some of our members cannot be here due to uh, spatial constraints, but they'll be listening through our vessel's broadcast system. Hey now, you've been helping us and taking good care of our kids. The least we can do is provide you with some maintenance and supplies. In that case, we'll accept your kind offer. Captain Mitsuba, there is no need to be so reserved. We may be under two different chains of command, but we, we, but we both serve the Earth Federation. I'm Young, uh, Yang, Young Gilly, the supervisor. It's a pleasure. I'd introduce you to my young, promising staff. I'd like to introduce you to my young, promising staff. Come on, hot guys, say hello. I'm Hanu Hatsura, uh, Hatsuna, operator of the mobile squad. N nice to meet you all. Oh, you don't even have a voice. Fuck off. Alright. I'm Suno Yusi Remi, maintenance division operator. So, Hana and Yusi are uh, both work on orbital base now, huh? Hey there, Shiro. I missed you, man. Between you, uh, Mamoru, Kaido, and me, it's like a class reunion up in here. I joined Triple G because I wanted to be like my brother, but Hatsu, uh, Hatsu did it to be closer to Mamoru. Isn't that cute? Seriously? Mamoru doesn't deserve a wa wife like you, Hana. Hold on. <clears throat> Hold on. Wife? Mamoru's barely 12. 20. What? Oh, okay. Are you already married? Wait, Mamoru. Your profile didn't mention a spouse. What's going on here? Ah, oh, that's, uh, well, um... How are you two still embarrassed by it? You've been married for 10 years. Okay, hold up. So I was about to be upset because of the fact of like, Japan has different age requirements when it comes down to age of consent and various stuff like that. But if the dude is barely 20, she's younger than him and they've been married for 10 years. Okay, that, that, that doesn't creep into, that hardly jumps into very creepy territory. Okay, that can't be legal. Well, Meru and I aren't Earthlings. All right, they, you know. We're not exactly bound by Earthling laws or family registers for that matter. Ah, uh, I don't think you understand how immigration works, my dude. Where have you been, Raynard? Wait, like they did tell you guys that they're not human. Or what am I thinking of the other characters? It, there's so many characters right now. Well, that would explain your superpowers, if not your wedding customs. <clears throat> it's not exactly public knowledge, so it's not written in the reports, but I'm actually from the trinary source oh okay all right no 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 this this is acceptable for one particular factor they may not actually be the ages that they're telling us because well they're from a different solar system so for all we know they could actually be far older or mature quicker because the entire thing about consent is about maturity and understanding and quite frankly, most people don't get that until after high school. Not that I have memories of that time. I was sent to Earth as a newborn baby. As for me, I'm essentially a bioweapon, developed to possess the same abilities as Mamoru. 
Despite our origins, though, we are considered ourselves to be Earthlings. So then you should actually be falling under the categories of the fucking law system. I'm sorry, law system doesn't care if you're from a particular place or not. In the regards of whether you can or can't do certain things. That's that's what immigration is all about. Sorry for hiding this, Captain. Only their co uh, closest friends know, and I didn't want you to get the wrong impression. It's not a problem, don't worry. They're our, co our comrades, and that's all that needs to be said. Thank you, Captain. Honestly, I'm more interested in this story of you getting buried at an age of 10. After the battle against the 31 Prime Evils, they were married prior to Maru departing the solar system for a time. These two lovebirds have always managed to create their own little world, you know? Like some divi uh, divining love field or something. So it's entirely possible that the way their race works is like um, doves and other types of birds, where they'll settle on one mate very young in their lives and just stick with them, period, for the rest of their life. Shiru, not you too. Uh, can I see the captain? Uh, I can see the captain is very curious about it, but better save it l for later, Kaido. I have another operation to inter uh, operator to introduce. Yes, sir. Perhaps some other time, Captain. I look forward to it. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah. A sec. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, my name is Hido. Uh, Hino Kaisai. Hino Kaisai. Research division operator. I'm a dual kind, so I am also a reserve head driver for a Gaiogi Go. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. Stop sneezing, you piece of shit nose. You mean you're wearing the same pilot suit as Maru and Kaido? <clears throat> Pure thoughts only, XO. You drooling, man. How old are you? The dry, uh, that, uh, the dive suit is a device that records, uh, and monitors the head driver's physical status. As a biomechanical engineer, I'll have you know that is a necessary piece of equipment for a dive. So I'd like you to refrain from leering. Can't say I... I don't get you, but, uh, y you hear, uh, you heard the lady. Let's try not to anger her longtime boyfriend, alright? Wow. You two, you're still dating? I guess. I guess. You two are made for each other. Oh, okay, so it's not him. He's, they're being, they're playing the fucking pronoun game again. I'm not mentioning the dude's fucking name. Great. Hiriko and her boyfriend, and anyone who wants to get upset over me using the statement of pronoun game, I'll, I'll go ahead and mention it here so you understand what the hell I mean. A pronoun game is where you don't say someone's name and you only use their pronouns to hint and poke and prod and artificially inflate the tension over the characters because these people have no reason not to say this person's fucking name that is a pronoun game it's not like Voldemort 
who, within their storyline, there was a reason not to say his name, but they had other things to call him, like the Dark Prince or the Dark Sorcerer or something that hints at who they're talking about. Their fear was to call him into existence by saying his name. That makes sense. This does not. Stop with program pronoun games. They are stupid. They've been working part-time for me for a long time. Sometimes I feel like I have an additional son and daughter. His daughter. Chief's real daughter has been in a coma for years. I think that... That's why he treats Hiruka with extra care. Alright, that's enough chatter. The reason I've called the Decrews here is not just engaging to transfer... Uh, in, in regard to transfer the gig I go. But to request your cooperation with Project Z. Project Z? As you know, the Gutsy Global Guard is a successor to the Gutsy Galaxy Guard. We've been told that the members of the Gutsy Glo Galaxy Guard are stranded in a dying universe. Exactly. We're working on a plan to rescue the Braves. And that plan is Project Z. No kidding? There's a way? I heard the universe they're in predates the Big Bang almost 15 billion years ago. It's going to be very difficult. We won't deny that, but it's not impossible. After all, Myru and I did m make it back to Earth, crossing those 15 billion years. Two children of the Braves sent uh, of the two the two children the Braves of GGG sent back. So it was the two of you, as I thought. Yes. People say that the new Braves of the Triple G Mobile Squad inherit the souls of their predecessors, but they don't know how right they are. The events that took place in the Triple or uh, the Triad Solar System are strictly confidential until very recently. I bet them f federal government guys blushed hard when they realized they had. Saved, uh, been saved by the same people they labeled as traitors. But it was a alien technology that allowed Maru and Kaido to cross the 15 billion year gap, right? So that's freaking impossible with Earth tech. There's a way. The power. A mysterious energy that exists on Jupiter. It can enhance anything that touches it astounding to astonishing levels, as well as allowing its users to cross time and space. However, its irises have never been understood, and no mention method for reliable control has ever been found. For these reasons, any attempt to use it for any purposes is extremely... Um, Con conversal? Alright. The super energy that exists on Jupiter? I've heard of it. Uh, I heard it was deemed impossible to control. It's true. <clears throat> it's true. Without question, uh, without a question, it is, without question, a destructive force. Z Master, the master program entity controlled by Zoro and Metal, brought about its own destruction because it was unable to control the power. But when the 31 primeval, primevals tried to drop a giant asteroid on Earth, the power sent it away back in time. Specifically, it was sent 65 million years into the past, and it ended up being the cause of the extinction for the dinosaurs which has since been disproven by the various scientists who fucking said it was the meteor in the first place. Go figure. In other words, the uh, power is both a destructive force and an energy capable of crossing through time. So that's why you believe it's the key to opening a gate to the triad system. 
We, the new Triple G, have a duty to protect the Earth, but we also want to save the old Triple G. Thus, the, for, the successes of pro, uh, for the success of Project Z, we believe that we should go to Jupiter and do some research. And that's where we come in, I'm assuming. It's certainly a plan too risk, uh, with too many risk factors to count. I know that you can't simply nod and take on the quest, but... On the contrary, we'd be happy to assist you. Huh? There would be no greater honor than to be part of a plan to rescue the Braves who saved the Earth. While this is my answer as the main authority of the Decrews, I believe mine is a feeling shared by the entire team. You said it, Captain. You heard the head of the Decrews. Alright then. As soon as everything's ready, we'll be initiate the joint operation between the Triple G and the Decrews. With the inspection of the on Jupiter on the schedule, Project Z is now in fully eh, now in full motion. This is great. Oh, cracked my voice. I heard that well enough through the headphones. Yeah, thanks, Shiro. The goal still lies beyond our sight, but it's definitely a big step in the right direction. But there's still one major problem. Sometimes a colossal shadow has been reported appearing on Jupiter. Project Z cannot progress until we've confirmed the shadow's nature. Some members of our team fought alongside... Ooh. There we go. Some members of our team fought alongside the old members of the Triple G, while others look up to him as heroes. I promise you, we will do our utmost. Just so you know, you're not the only ones who want to rescue Guy, Mitkoto, and the others. Halloweenette. What are you doing here? And what's with that uniform? Didn't you know? Altoinette has joined the Triple G. She is a mobile squad operator, like me. And don't think I joined just because I wanted to be closer to Kaido. It's because I want to help the pro Z Project to meet them. And how do you know Guy and Mato uh, Matoko? You're only 15. Well, that's a bit of a long story, but how about we save it for another? Thank you, Chief, but there's no DBT... Uh... Ah! Brain! Come on! Thank you, Chief, but there's no need to be so considerate of me. There's no need to hide that I'm a product of Bionet's genetic uh, enhancement experiments. Huh? Well, uh, if you're sure, dear... Apparently, Antoinette's mother was subject to various experiments when she was pregnant. As a result, Antoinette uh, was born with genius level the intellect. If you're wondering what kind of genius you're talking about, you should know that she wrote the Guy Fiagar's final fusion program at five. Pardon? That was the fighting machine mechoid guy. Shijon piloted after Gigai Gur, if I remember correct. Since Gilin, Gigai Gur's core machine, left me with uh, for the Tri-Solar System, the world needed a new King of Braves. I see. So you must have met Guy while Maru and I were away from Earth. One day I, well, suffered a bit of a head trauma. And I ended up forgetting what happened back then. In a twist of irony, it was Bionet's recent kidnapping that made me remember. I'm so sorry. Oh, did it sound like I was looking for pity? Well, I'm not. I'm glad my memories are back, because now I can get to contribute to Project C. As an added bonus, I get to be closer to Kaido. Alright, I get it, but don't stick so close to me. But Kaido! What's going on? 
Multiple hostiles approaching orbit base. Zero uh, ZO particles detected. They're pseudo Zodron uh, um, Zunderer robots. It's Bionet. Are they street? Out picking a fight with the Triple G? Not to mention in the presence of the DeCruz? The orbit base is an invaluable asset to all mankind, Chief. We will deploy at once to defend you. Thanks a bunch, Captain. FYI, I I could look over at my recording program and see the little waves of when stuff is in the background, but I won't actually notice it because of the headphones I'm currently using. Um, I don't know if these headphones will be a staple of my current stuff, but uh, I will definitely say that they're fun. Everybody's already in the 20s. Nice. Uh, let's work on you two. Um, I know I... He's in there, so that's cool. Wow, you guys are already level 23? Too bad your mechs kind of suck. Oh, right. You're, you guys' mechs suck, too. Oh, right, we need to work on Gridman. Um, and you too. Because they specialize in space combat. Why would they ever attack something as invincible as the orbit base? That's a good question, as one I don't have a good answer to. Foes inbound. Oh, they're... <laughs> Here they come, guys. That's quite the army of mere criminal organization. But not enough to pose a real threat to the orbit base. And that's when we aren't around. They're in for a beating they'll never forget. Ionet will pay dearly for the recklessness. All units eliminated enemy forces ASAP. Project Z is almost ready. I won't let anyone stop us now. Hang in there, guy. Everyone. We'll be there soon. If the final victory condition is visible from the start, don't need to worry about re uh, reinforcements. Go nuts! Hi! How are you all? Oh, that's not going to kill you? Alright. <laughs> it will change the fucking mechanics. Goodbye. Project C, a mission to rescue the Braves of Triple G. I'll do my best. They've saved this world so many times. It's only fair that someone helps them for once. Barrier critical. Ah! Fuck off. Fuck yeah. I always love the SRX. Um Oh, okay, this is who I'm... 
he needs help because he's not kidding. Project Z, the Triple G rescue mission. Ha! <laughs> the idea alone is enough to make my soul ablaze. Oh, he gets charged. That's awesome. Um... Ah, I, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Hang on a little longer, guy. Those kids are working so hard to rescue, and so are we. We're going to smash that 15 billion year wall with our combined bravery. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there you go. Maru, Kaido, we're going to do it. We're going to save Guy and all the rest of our friends. I can't wait to show them that we've become brave warriors just like them. <laughs> Alright. According to the Triple G reports, there seems to be no rhyme or reason to the Bionet's recent activities. This attack is yet another example. Why would they attack the orbit base like this? It makes no sense. I see zero reason in blocking this attack. Actually, she weathered that really well. She can heal herself, so I'm not that worried.
Now it's going to be really fucking hard for him to hit anything. Not like he'll survive. <laughs> Go away. The SRX is just this weird mech that looks goofy as shit, but is actually powerful as fuck. <laughs> Turn that off. We've seen the leap flasher so many times at this point that it's like, yeah. Um, everybody else deserves a chance to see what's going on, though. Not even close. Hi! Red Beam! Fuck you! Uh, actually, can I do that with just the caliber? Yeah, let's do it with the caliber. He actually took it pretty well. Yeah! A 2% chance to hit. Gaishin, Shishon, and the Triple G. For those like me who had endured Brittany, uh, Britannia's tyranny. The word bravery was like a lifeline. Project C, if there's anything I could do to help them, I'll do it. Really? Just because we just saw it. Alright. Um, 
Yeah, they can all be used after moving, so. I want to see this one again. I still not what I was expecting out of that entire exchange. The only reason is because she's my healer out of the uh, Ray Earth team. And I have very few healers, so yeah. You are... Koji. Hell yeah! Full volley takedown. Project Z. Unravel the mystery of the power and rescue the Triple G. Yeah, we'll do it. Wait for us, guys. <laughs> I'll show you the power of this mysterious power. Launch everything! Um... I don't think that's really the st demonstrating anything. Yeah, it is. See? They're gone. <laughs> like, that... I don't think they learned from that. That's the point. Alright, alright, alright. That's fair. Oh, right, yeah. I keep forgetting he has that. At 120 morale, final damage increase and receives the effects of potential level 9. AKA, while under this effect, he effectively has that. So the lower his hit points, the higher that goes. Okay. Um, wait, you're level 20, you're level 23, you're level 20, you're level 20, 24. I don't have to worry about those. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go for it. Finish them off. Go nuts. As the instructions said.
We've confirmed the elimination of the Bionet units. Now that's what I'd call an easy victory, eh, Captain? Captain? As Maru and Kaido have said, Bionet's actions are simply too confusing. This is bothering me. Good work, everyone! I've read the reports, but damn! You guys are the best! The strongest! Frickin' awesome! I feel that's a bit excessive, but thank you for your kind words, Chief. As a show of my respect, I'll personally be, uh, taking care of your unit's maintenance. In other words, the Chief wants to get up close and personal with every machine in the dec in the decrews. You'll have to resist temptation for a while. First, we have to try and figure out the reason for the Bionet's erratic behavior. So, this isn't typical behavior for them? Bionet's a criminal organization. Normally, they only send their pseudo -ro uh, Zonder Robos if they had something to gain from it. But they have nothing to gain from attacking the orbital base directly. My theory is that, rather than attempt at destroying us, this was reconnaissance. Factoring in the presence of de the de Cruz here, nothing else makes sense. I get what you're saying, but you've read the reports recently. Nothing they've been doing makes sense. I have to admit, I've... I haven't been able to figure out the reason behind this, this attack myself. Maybe the loss of their leader, Dr. Uh, Thanatos, has broken their chain of command? If I may, I would like to offer a theory of perspective of bio uh, of a biomechanical biomedical engineer. Are you aware of the phenomenon called Aller, uh, Alleranon, uh, Algernon? Alger what now? I've read about Algernon in a classified document. Is it very well detailed, but it was described as a disease that threatened the existence of mankind. That is a good way to put it. Algernon is a phenomenon that causes sudden death. There was an outbreak of it ten years ago. Did the fail, uh, Federation fail to notice this incident because it happened in the middle of the rest of that whole mess? As stated in the document Captain Mitsuba read, at the time it was considered a form of illness. The truth is, Algernon is a self-kill switch built in hu uh, humankind's genetic code. A what now? I told you... I've, I'm told you've already met Summerin. The, I'm sorry, who? Pardon me, the life forms we call better men. All right, yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. They refer to themselves as Sun, uh, Sumarim. Let me start again. Have you ever heard of the Gaia Hypothesis? Yes, it's the idea that the ecosystem created by the mutual relationships between a planet and its inhabitants are likely to be a living being are likened to a living being. Correct. And the better men are a living creature's immune system. So their role in this would be to destroy the foreign substances invading the body? Then why aren't they fighting the invaders or the Wagul? Unfortunately, from their perspective, beings like those are no different than the dirt, uh, than dirt clinging to Gaia's skin. However, they seem to be prepared to fight against something more serious. Something that's making its way deeper within the body. What would that be? That we don't know yet. However, for now, I can tell you that in order to draw out their true power, they must ingest something called animus seeds. Kaido said something about that, yes. Animus seeds come from flowers that only grow on the bodies of someone affected by Algernon. Whoa, hold on. That means that better men eat people? 
they're monsters. I mean, technically speaking, if you really want to boil shit down to the absolute basis, we all eat people. If you look back far enough, eventually what we die and become gets back into the food system. That's a biased opinion. When you think about it, humans are fed upon by animals and plants in order to survive. We feed upon. I mean, yes, but... Algernon is a, a necessary step required to give birth to the animus seed. In other words, we are programmed to activate it when we must stimulate the sullen into recovering a contaminant... Uh, recovering... Removing, sorry. Removing a contamination from the world body. When Algernon occurs, your neurotransmitter spike and you are compelled to act in an aggressive, self-destructive manner. Is it possible that the entirety of Bionet is affected by Algernon? From what Meru and uh, Kaido's reports on Dr. Thanos' behavior, it is definitely possible. If this ends up completely destroying Bionet, I'm totally a-okay with it, but... The point is, an outbreak of Algernon means the Sullen need to be stirred into action. Which means Earth is endangered by something that requires their presence. Could it be? I must have to do- it must have to do with this conquering king they mentioned. Well, no use thinking about if there's no solution to be found. Time to switch gears! Triple G will keep an eye on the Betterman movements. Meanwhile, the crews will keep kicking butts of those jerks out there who hate peace. Then we'll call all focus on Project Z. Understood. We will look after the Ga uh, Gaio Gia Go and its pilots. Speaking of which, I'd like to send Hatsu your way as our liaison. You mean Hana is going to travel with us? I'm certainly not going to be the one keeping such a cute couple apart. But that's going to be dangerous. Then you'll just have to protect her, won't you? Itsuma. Besides, you shouldn't be thinking about her feelings. Uh, you should be thinking about her feelings first. Would it bother you if I came along? No way. If anything, you being there will give me all the braver I'll need. Mm hmm that's sweet. Though, please do try to be mod uh, moderate with your displays of affection on the ship. They might lower morale of part of the crew, starting with the XO. C Captain! <laughs> then we're all set. Maru, Kaido, Hana, take care. Yes, sir. See you when it's time to initiate Project Z to cruise. You've come. Lurana. Yes. Higuran. Here. Rice. You may refer to me as the beautiful minstrel if you prefer. Gajamon. Yeah. Sarah. Yes. Aaron. Mm. If you need my help to defend the, uh, to defeat the Conquer King, then so be it. The Conquer King is not the only obstacle we, Samaran must face for the sake of the Time Parrot. Patrell. Of course, the source of evil must also be dealt with. Amara. For another forte seed has uh, another forte seed has been produced. Amazing. Darn it, if only my body could handle the strain of the forte evolution. Don't say that. The fact that Forte was produced is a sign that humanity is facing extinction. I I know that. And without human uh, humans we can't get any more animus seeds. The Conquer King, the source of evil, 
We must um, overcome many obstacles before we can return to the skies of Petra. Cool. Another supporter. Oh, of course. I didn't get to move her around. Damn. I missed out on a couple of pieces of experience. Whatever. But. Should be enough. Yeah, there it is. Alright, both weapons and unit costs have been cut. So, now the question comes... Where do I go next? Um, accuracy, command skill, supporter deployment slot I think is really important. Oh, Jesus. Command area, okay. Oh, okay. So yeah, we'll start going down this path. Because I'll get more uh, support... Um... No, no, no. Did we get any new ones? We got the thruster module. Oh! Which I guess I could have used. Um. Wait, where's that other mech? Don't I have a spare mech running around somewhere that had some pieces to it? There you are! There we go, so you can get back your ability to fucking heal people. Oh, that's a one-time use. That's not what I'm talking about. Where'd it go? There it is. There, now you can heal again. This actually can... This guy can actually move underwater. He's one of the few mechs that I have that can move underwater. That's cool. Alright, uh, there it is. Supporters. So, housekeeping, um, passive. Cost of bravery, spirit is reduced by 5. The cost cannot be reduced by low 1. Um, active. Alright. Yeah, I really, really want to upgrade, because... Some of these guys are really important to have on staff. But for now, oh, no, no. I will catch you all in the next episode. Until then, have fun, be safe, and aloha.